Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Um, well, uh, just out of curiosity, I was, um, uh, around on the, uh, doodling around on my web browser like I usually do. Um, and I decided to go ahead and type down, uh, I decided to Google addiction myths. And this came up and I saw the first, saw the first, uh, I saw the first myth and I figured I better uh, make a video about this. This is going to be my reaction video. Um, because, uh, Right now, I've got a serious issue. Um, when I, a couple of years ago, I weighed anywhere between 210 to 220 pounds, and just um, I had a sudden epiphany. It's really hard to explain unless you like, unless you stock groceries at Walmart or something. So, I'll just I'll just say, I had an epiphany at work one day. All of a sudden, I decided that I need to lose I need to lose the weight now. That kind of triggered it. So over the course of about a year, year and a half, I managed to get my weight down from 210 to somewhere around 210 or 220 to about 150. So, but once I got to the 150, then it became a struggle to try to keep it off, which, which when some lose some. So, but um, one thing that did happen is uh, I've had more and more heavier cravings for junk food. Um... It's a it's a cla it's a classic saying, diets don't work, and I was no exception because basically what I did was a crash diet. I crashed my way down to 150, but problem was is uh, trying to keep the pounds off is mm, it's extremely difficult if not impossible. So basically it was food denial. So now, so it, but I'll 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 elaborate further as I read further down, but like I said, I'm, for the most part, this is unrehearsed, um, like I said, I just saw the first entry on this, and it hit home, so, right, right when I saw that, I figured I better make a video about this, and better grab some water, because uh, my throat's getting parched already. For many people who have never struggled with a drug or alcohol addiction, um, I mean, I'm straight edge. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. But um, I, I'm one of those that believes that an addiction is an addiction. It doesn't matter whether you're hooked on cocaine or, or in my case, uh, peanut butter crispy or peanut butter crispy bars. It doesn't. It doesn't matter to me. To me, it's still an addiction. You know, it's something that, it's something that really, it really can impede your life. It can impede your goals. Like, in my case, I was hoping to get my gut down to 32 inches. I'm at 34 and a half, so, so much for that. But anyway, let me, let me continue. They don't understand the ins and outs of the problem. Unfortunately, the media doesn't always help either. Yes, because um, the media doesn't. The result is a series of lies, misconceptions, and myths about addiction that have been spread, of, been spread about as incorrect truths. And um, this needs to stop. And um, uh, before I met, and um, now that I think about it, I'm probably gonna have to elaborate further about my life. Um, starting in my early 20s, I was hooked on what were called mini fins. They were basically ephedrine tablets. They're amphetamine tablets. You know, they wake you up. They, you know, they make, you know, they make you wide awake. It's almost like a, it's like a cocaine in a pill. It's almost like cocaine in pill form. Um, I went through about a bottle a day, which at the time consisted. At first, it consisted of about a hundred bottle or hundred tablets in one bottle. Eventually, it would get knocked down because uh, ephedrine would be uh, would be banned by the FDA and would be replaced by pseudoephedrine which is uh, the not as good stuff, then they they shortened it down to 80, 80 a bottle. But, I mean, it's still a pretty high number. I mean, 80, 80 tablets in one day? Yeah. So, a, a lot of this is due to the fact that I was, for all intents and purposes, homeless. I lived in my car. Uh, I mostly lived in my car, and uh, when I could afford it, I'd sleep in a hotel for a day or two. But I mostly lived in my car. This is until, um, 
one of the guys I was working with at the grocery store I was working at, he offered to let me live with him, just, you know, sleep on the couch, or eventually I'd end up sleeping on the floor because, believe it or not, you know, I found it to be, actually be more comfortable than sleeping on a couch. So, but, but anyway, um, but eventually he went up, he had to move back to Louisiana, and so they went ahead and just put that apartment that I was, put his apartment in my name. So, the first time in my life I ever had my own place, um, so right after that, I just, that was when, that was when I just started picking out like crazy. I mean, just, just shoveling food in my mouth, because, I mean, you know, you know, never was, you know, I mean, probably like a lot of other people, you know, your parents, you know, you know, they basically control what you eat. What do we have for dinner, Daddy? Oh, uh, we're having goulash. Ew! You don't like it, don't eat it, son. You know, that kind of thing. But now, I basically had unrestricted freedom, you know, to eat whatever I want. So I just, you know, just ate like a pig. So, I mean, and during that time, I think I weighed about 120 pounds at the time. Um, over the course of probably about a year or two, I literally ate myself to 260 pounds. So, so it, it, if you want to start from that far back, it was basically a 20 year struggle to get my way from 260 to 150. So, throughout that time, I've, I've had to endure my fair share of fat shaming. And just the whole stigma involved with being fat and, you know, and all the lies, misconceptions, and myths about addiction, yada, yada, yada. So, again, this, this is pretty much what triggered me to make this video. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Overcoming addiction is a matter of willpower. This, this I find to be totally and completely an utter bullshit. In fact, if this were true, I think the world would be a great place. It would be a much better place because all you'd have to do is sit here and just, hmm, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> hey, the problem went away just like that. Wow. You know, I just, you know, that kind of thing. I know, I'm depressed. I want to kill myself. <laughs> hey, the problem went away. I'm not suicidal anymore. Yippee, yay, ho, ho. You know, it doesn't work that way. I mean, but no, but no, the world is the way it is right now. You know, just everybody has their own addiction. Everybody's got their own issues. Everybody has their own struggles in life. If it were that easy, like I said, if, if it were that easy, if you could just simply will yourself to stop I mean this place would be very damn near you this place would be practically a utopia and side note not all of us are not all of us are David Goggins and even he's the um he was an ultra marathon runner and he was also a uh, retired Navy SEAL but uh, he was one of the most hardcore guys you'll ever meet but I mean even him even for even for him, it became a it became a struggle. He didn't become hardcore overnight. So. Exposure to drugs alters the brain in ways that result in powerful cravings and a compulsion to use. Again, it's a lot. It, it's it's not it's not that easy. Make it extremely difficult to quit by sheer force of will. Yes, like I said, it can't. You can't just shut it off. Okay, um, this one... Nope. 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 Um... There's a lot of people, uh, pro wrestlers first come to mind. They, um, they get addicted to this stuff. They get addicted to prescription uh, medicine, prescription painkillers. Um, like I said, they're the one, first ones that come to mind, pro wrestlers, MMA fighters. I would think would also have to, they probably have their, uh, they probably have their fair share of this as well. And, uh, and prescribed by doctors. Um, I'm, I would think they'd, I'm, 
I'm sure they mean well. Like, they don't want you taking any more than what's on the bottle, but... Excuse me. Again, depending on the person... Um, again, pro wrestlers first come to mind. They're probably going to take well more of the recommended daily allowance. Can help to manage severe pain after an accident or surgery. Yep. Regular or long-term use of opioids can lead to addiction. Yep. It's like I said before, an addiction is an addiction. Doesn't matter what you're addicted to or how you got it. struggling with this problem. But like I said, I'm not, again, I'm not, and this doesn't really pertain to me much. Again, I'm straight edge. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. Um, the most I might take would be like a, like one or two ibuprofen if the pain's really bad or something. Um, I might take, I might drink a little little sip of NyQuil, like if, if sleep is just gonna be next to impossible without it, I'll do that. But that's about it. Addiction is it? Um, I kind of agree that addiction isn't a is a disease. There's nothing that can be done about it. Um, yeah, there's. Again, I look at the David Goggins example. If, if you don't know who, if you don't know who he is, I don't really have the time to go into detail about his life. But get a book called "Can't Hurt Me." I mean, I haven't even read the entire book. I think I'm maybe in the first four or five chapters. But yeah, he's living proof that there is there is something that can be done about your issue. Agree that addiction is a disease that affects the brain, but that doesn't mean anyone is helpless. Yes. Brain changes associated with addiction can be treated and reversed through therapy, medication, exercise, and other. Yep. But I'm also one of those that you don't have to go to rehab in order to get better. I mean, I, I mean, somebody like Miles Davis, he's probably a shining example of this. He was addicted to heroin for many years, but then he just quit cold turkey, just like that. Um, but um, eventually though, he would become addicted to cocaine. But at one point, he just quit cold turkey. So, you know, I think they all came at a, they all came at a price. I've read his biography. I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what happened to him after he quit all that. But I'm sure he didn't get up. I mean, I'm sure he didn't get out of there scot-free. Addicts have to hit rock bottom before they get better, before they can get better. Nope. 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 I didn't hit, um, the closest, uh, as far as me hitting rock bottom, that was when I first, back in my mid to late 20s, when I first stepped on the scale, thinking, ah, I'm just going to be about 200 pounds, nothing else, nothing big. Step on the scale on a side of red 260. <laughs> you know, figure out, oh, I better do something about this. I mean, that was the only exception, but for the most part, I know, I mean, I'm not rock bottom. I mean, like I said, I weigh 150. I mean, I, I'm not obese. So, not, not near it. I mean, if anything, if you looked at the, um, if you looked at the BFI index, I'm, I'm with, I'm actually, uh, I'm within the uh, normal range. I'm, technically, I'm healthy. But I'm, like I said, I'm still trying to, it's, this I'm worried about. I'm trying to get it down to one. I'm trying to get it down to 32 inches. But yeah, recovery can begin at any point in the addiction process, and the earlier the better. Yes. Um, because you can, because like I like I said, when I. It took me uh, weighing myself on a scale, to figure out that I had a really serious addiction problem. I mean, but during that time, but before then, I pretty much had the time of my life. 
I mean, I never knew I was addicted. I just ate and 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 ate, and ate, and ate my way to 260. So, so the sooner you can figure that out, the better. Um, I think uh, the implication here is that uh, this is referring to somebody else who knows somebody who has an addiction issue. But again, just like, um, again, Miles Davis comes to mind, David Goggins comes to mind. Um, I guess um, I'm thinking to anybody else, to anybody else who quit their addiction cold turkey, um, you, don't, you don't need to go into rehab in order to get better. You don't, you don't need that, that support network in order to get better. I mean, none of them guys did. I mean, if, if, if you get it, if it helps, then fine, great. But I'm not saying never, you know, never have a support, you know, never have a support network. But, I mean, you don't, it's a, it'd be a plus but not a requirement, basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, yeah, kind of yes, kind of no. Um, okay, I remember what I wanted to say about this. This was, um, this was one of the reasons, indirectly, why I stayed fat. Um, uh, fat shaming, I mean, fat shaming kept me fat. Um, the one of, that was because, you know, because, um, I mean, I'm trying to put, I'm trying to put this into words. Basically, I'm fat because, fuck you. That was, that was one of the reasons I stayed there. I mean, I don't. I don't want to, I don't want to give these, I don't want to give the pricks the satisfaction. That's the phrase I was looking for. I am, I mean, yeah, I mean, probably back, you know, back in the day, I mean, I don't, you know, I didn't like being fat. I wanted to lose weight, but I also didn't want to, I didn't want to lose it on their terms. I didn't want to give anybody any reason at all, all to think that fat shaming works or to think that fat shaming had a hand in helping me get better, which no, if anything, it made me, uh, it kept me fat just out of spite. Because, like I said, I don't, I don't like fat shamers, and I don't like power trippers. I don't want to give those bricks the satisfaction. So, indirectly, this is, this is kind of what I think this is referring, this is what it means to me. Treatment doesn't have to be voluntary to be successful. Uh, people, people who are pressured into treatment by their family employer, the legal system. Uh, again, it probably varies depending on the person. But again, if uh, if uh, I mean, if, back when I was really, really fat, if you know, somebody is sitting here talking. The moment I hear somebody talking about obesity and diabetes and whatnot, I'm gone. I don't, like I said, I don't, I, I basically, I want to do it on my terms. I want to win the battle on my terms, not somebody else's. So. <laughs> oh, God, um, oh, there was a, I wish I knew his name, I, He's a, he's a stand-up comedian. Um, oh, I wish I knew his name. He died recently. But uh, he was one of the he was one of the best one of the best roast comedians. One of the best roast comedians out there. Not Don Rickles. It was another guy, but he died recently of a I think he OD'd on prescription medication. But throughout his whole entire life, he's been uh, in and out of rehab several times. Um, he's had a, I think he had a, he had a sobriety tattoo on his forearm. Um, but yeah, he often, uh, and he often worked his addictions into a stand-up act. But yeah, he's, he's been in and out of rehab many times, so. But, uh, like, but the thing of it was is he's, uh, every time, I mean, every time he gets, uh, he gets back on the drugs and alcohol, he's basically, he just, Picks himself back up and gets back in the race. That's life. So yes, it, just because I mean, 
Just because it didn't work before doesn't mean you shouldn't do it ever again. And this is exactly what I'm going through too. It's a long process, often involves setbacks. But like I said, I've uh, I've incorporated working, I've incorporated lifting weights. This is um back when I was around, I think around the one hundred, the hundred and sixty pound area. Once I was around there, against my better judgment, I started lifting weights, which I thought was a bad idea because I work at a job where all where I already do a lot of heavy lifting. So I figured out uh, lifting weights on the side was just gonna make things worse. Um, but when I got to 150, once uh, when I started rebounding back to 165, I took up intermittent fasting. Um, but uh, even then, that that kind of helped. That kind of helped keep the weight down. But uh, even then, though. Signal to get back on track, either by going back to the treatment or adjusting the treatment approach, which is, again, this is what I said a few moments ago. This is what I did. Just started lifting weights when I can and doing some doing some intermittent fasting when it is possible when when it is possible to do so. So but like I like I said, this is this is mainly in reference This is mainly in reference to um People addicted to drugs and alcohol, but like I said, I love me some junk food, and um, again, the weight loss, all that, um, the fact that diets don't work because it's uh, food denial and all that, it's just basically, um, basically the uh, the addictions came back harder, which means I have to work harder. So, but anyway, that's gonna. But that's going to do it for this video. And once again, I just, this is just something I felt the need to get out. So, thanks for watching and enjoy your day.